Uh, thank you. Um, I retired about three years ago. Um, I retired uh, because there's a, a lot of turmoil on the department at that particular time, and uh, my wife just happened to become uh, terminally ill, and I uh, left to uh, take care of her. And uh, because of the turmoil going on in the department, I decided not to come back. But what I found out was going on in the department at the time is that we had inmates that were being beaten needlessly in Men's Central Jail. Uh, they were purposely, uh, bones were being broken uh, just to get a tattoo to be along to part of the gangs. Uh, I've got a lot of documents here. I'd love to show anybody here who wants to see this here up to including pictures of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, once I identified the particular problem, I had to move that captain in this uh, particular uh, jail, Men's Central Jail. And uh, a, ca a commander in my rank at 33 years on the department running the jail has, uh, does not have the latitude to move the captain. The sheriff that makes the promotion, the sheriff is the one that makes the transfers. And when I ran it up the chain of command to go ahead and determine uh, that uh, this individual needed to be transferred, uh, nobody would listen. My uh, media boss said, let him fail. I said, unacceptable. I ran it up the chain through uh, his, my, his boss. I ran it up to uh, the other assistant sheriff, Mr. Tanaka, and I eventually went to Mr. Baca on two different occasions. And each time they turned around and walked away. Uh, that being said, at that particular point, uh, I was retired at that time frame, and I felt I had still had to do something. Uh, it was the problem was still sitting in my lap. Um, so I went to the FBI and I went to the LA Times. The result of me going to the LA Times and the FBI, uh, you've seen in the paper now for the last three years. I put my head on a pillow at night and I can sleep. I don't have a problem doing it because when I raised my hand and took an oath to uphold the Constitution, I did it for a particular reason. And that is because we have to maintain the, the, the dignity of the organization and the Constitution. I did it all for the right reasons. Uh, the result is that uh, Mr. Tanaka was allegedly finessed off the department. Lee Baca has resigned uh, prematurely. We had a Citizens Commission on Jail Violence that took a look at the allegations that I brought up to the executives on the department. And they came back with 63 resounding different uh, processes that needed to be changed, of which Mr. Baca finally agreed that we needed to go ahead and have some changes with, within the organization. But that was already two years into the problem. Having been the star witness on this to identify a lot of the particular problems, I was able to get these changes to occur. Uh, and as a result, uh, a more, uh, more change has come, and I'm glad it has. Um, I'm running uh, for sheriff because there, there's a need to change the culture in the organization. There's a catastrophic failure of leadership within the organization. 99% of the men and women on the department are good, hard-working men and women. It's the leadership that failed the organization, and I place it at the feet of both Paul Tanaka and Lee Baca for this organization of the failure. Matter of fact, two more things came out in today. You'll see it in the NBC4, and it came out in the LA Times. Read it tomorrow. Two more significant incidents just came out regarding um, uh, actually one of the candidates here, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Helmold. Uh, all that being said, uh, there's some significant things that still need to be uh, done and things that need to change. Uh, that's the reason why I'm running for sheriff, because... Um, I think it's that important. I'm retired. I could have stayed retired. Retirement's great. I invested well. Done a lot of traveling and having fun. However, sometimes there's a greater need. There's a greater calling in life, and that is uh, and it's, it's something more than just self, and I decided to come back in and, and fix the organization. I'm second generation. My son wants to be third generation. I want to give it a safe environment uh, for him to go ahead and to uh, have a great career, and with that in mind, um, I'm looking forward to uh, being sheriff, and I'm requesting your help. Any any questions at all, sir? The, the Ninth Circuit just came down with a ruling in a case in San Diego, and I was just wondering if you become sheriff, will you be issuing concealed weapons permits to people who want this? I'm glad you asked that because I was misquoted on the last time when the, when we, uh, the same question came up. I'm a constitutional sheriff. Whatever the rend uh, rendition of, or it comes down from the, uh, from the court, that's what I'll we'll, we'll abide by. If it says that we're going to go ahead and free it up, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. However, I think it's premature to do it now. And you can take a look at Sandy Hutchin down in Orange County. The manpower needed with all the influx of, of uh, applications coming in is astronomical. They're having to hire a whole pool of people. It would be great if it occurred, since she would be ahead of the curve. But if it doesn't, then it's just a waste of manpower and time and effort and the whole thing when we, you can actually be using uh, the, uh, those resources uh, somewhere else. So that being said, I am a constitutional sheriff. I will follow the rendition of exactly what comes down with the, with the Ninth Circuit. I'm just going to wait. And I think that would be a very prudent move to do. Any other questions? Uh, 
Uh, my name is Will Leader, and I'm a candidate for Congress who will be on the same ballot as you. My question to you, to you is, when you become our sheriff, what do you now anticipate will be the single greatest immediate threat to the safety of the residents of Los Angeles County? The greatest immediate threat. Um, I think right now is probably the budget. We've, uh, we've paid out over $100 million in lawsuits in the last three years. $47 million last year, 33 the year before. We're probably going to hit about $150 million, I'm sorry, about, about $50 million this, this uh, upcoming one. Another significant lawsuit was filed today on the LA County Sheriff's Department. I'd be glad to show it to you. That amount of money is a loss of public trust. That amount of money can be used elsewhere. I can utilize a, a good portion of that just by analyzing the, the nuances of how to cut that out and put that into front-end programs. I can give it to, the, uh, to our STAR program, which is similar to DARE out here in the LAPD area. Uh, we've got over 2,000 active open cases right now in our Special Victims Bureau. This is the, these are the people that actually investigate um, uh, child abuse and, and adult rape suspects, and they're so backlogged by three years, four years almost, that money can be used to hire more investigators. And then we need to anticipate the crimes of the future and, and, and figure out how we're going to investigate those. But evenly more, more important than that, I have to say, is, is when's the last time you ever heard of our jails being underpopulated? <laughs> They've always been overpopulated, and that's just a lack of vision for the, on, on the Sheriff's Department we've had for years and years and years. And that's only going to get worse, so I'm going to have to build in protocols and processes to, and I've got them all identified in my pathway to reform, which I have here as well, uh, as to how to go ahead and lower that. But I think it's going to be the budget, and it's going to be done at the best interest of, of, of uh, public uh, service uh, and, and the citizens to make sure we spend the money wisely, because right now there is no public trust because we're not using it wisely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, hi. You, uh, you had said that you are, uh, or you're going to be a constitutional um, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Um, if there's a law in the books, and in your gut, you just know that it's not a, a, a just law, what would you do? You know, you have to analyze those just laws. Uh, and, and one thing I learned, I was the legislative aide for um, uh, uh, Sherman Block when I was uh, worked for him directly. And I had to go to the legislature and argue these bills all the time, right and left. But part of it is you just have to have a good assessment or analysis of what the particular problems are and then be able to weigh them accordingly. But if it's justly wrong and I truly believe that, then I'm going to go ahead and, and take that law on and fight it if it's done for the right reason, if it's done for public interest and it's done for public safety. Uh, that, I'd have to do that. that. That's what I'm about. Any more up front? You talk about this uh, captain and when you were the commander at MCJ and how the force was through the roof. Some of the numbers that I've seen in, as far as sports statistics, they were quite similar when you were the captain there as when this other captain was. Uh, how do you explain that? I've got the stats right here. I'll be glad to show them to you. All I need to do is drag them out. The stats were provided by Custody Support Services. They're the ones that, uh, here they are. Custody for Support Services, 2006 to 2009. It was uh, issued out on May 27, 2010 by Chief Dennis Burns. And it shows that when I was a captain of Mid Central Jail, and I'll be glad to display this and show it to everybody, that I lowered force by 25%. I went in at the height. Mr. Tanaka asked me to come in. He said, we got force issues, morale issues, things that are going on in the jail that are inappropriate. I lowered it by 25%, and I did it with no more extra bodies, no more deputies, no cameras, no added money, and no more added supervision. I did it by walking around, managing by walking around, uh, uh, raising the benchmark, holding people accountable, all for the right reasons. And it continued to drop into 2008 until I made commander in April of 2008. And when I made commander, Lee Bakken said, you're doing such a great job over here, cleaning this place up, and I'm going to promote you to commander, and then I oversaw the uh, three southern jails. Men Central Jail, Twin Towers, and CRDF. I've got the stat here to show that broken bones went up astronomically, almost threefold in one year. And I have to ask the particular question, how and why did this occur? The problem was there was a lack of leadership within Men Central Jail. I did not want Dan Cruz to fail, and I went to Lee Baca because of that, and I went to my chief because of it. We just need to move him and put him in another assignment. They wouldn't do it. As a matter of fact, they were going to promote him. 
I found that atrocious. One more? Oh. Sorry, Sandra. So cute. Sorry, sorry. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.